<laughs> All right. Today, we have the legendary Mike Levine of the great band Triumph. Hey, thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for uh, taking your time today. Hey, Chris. No problem. My pleasure. Hey. So, uh, Triumph, one of the greatest bands from Canada of all time. Yeah, well, people do say that. <laughs> hey, that's what they do. <laughs> and uh, so, what do you got going on, Mike? Well, we're working on, um, we just finished putting to bed the uh, 40th anniversary uh, vinyl of our performance at the US Festival. Never been out on vinyl before. It's a really nice package, gatefold, you know, two LPs. Um, uh, there is some colored vinyl. I don't know. I think that might be gone by now, but certainly there's there's black. It's available for pre-order. So that was uh, kind of a labor of love, you know, just going back to the actual us festival itself and listening to the tracks and how well we played. We you know, we actually killed it then. It was like we were hot in a pistol that day. So so let's go back to the us festival. What was it like when when you first walked out on stage when you guys were getting ready to start? What was your first thought when you walked out and saw the crowd? Jesus, I hope my app works because we were using <laughs> there's no sound check and uh, we were using rented gear because we had played in at the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando with the ZZ Top the day before. So there's no way we can have gear there. And uh, so it did work, which was great. Then I kind of went, I looked out in the crowd and went, there's an endless sea of people. You could not see the end of the crowd. And wow. it was like, it was pretty weird. Like it took me a couple of songs to get in the groove to realize, hey, there's 20 cameras there all over the yeah. place. It's a, it's a big TV show. This is not a concert. So uh, that, that helped when I realized that. So when you're standing in front of that many people, how far out can you see? How many rows? I'm just curious. Who, who the hell knows? You know? yeah, uh, but I mean, like making eye contact, I'm sure after that, it's just... Well, you could make eye contact with anybody. Like the closest the crowd was, was maybe 50 feet in front of the stage because of the, the camera bays and the, the availability of space and all the barricades and all that. So really, it's like you had no feedback for, you know, when you play at, a, you know, a, a stadium even, you could hear the crowd, right? They were going to roar, but they're, they're, they sing a lot with you. Like you couldn't hear a thing from the audience. Huh. They'd be roaring, but we couldn't hear it. So you were one of the main bands that actually recorded the set where most of the bands didn't have a recorded set of their their time on stage at us festival. Uh, yeah, I think everybody got recorded. Uh, the problem was a question of ownership. And part of that was part that. of our deal that, that our agent made was that we, um, I guess, uh, Unison, which was Steve Wozniak's company, who put up all the dough for everybody to get paid and the site and everything. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> they had the right to for a, a broadcast or two on MTV, I think. And that was it. The rest of it was ours. Hence, we got the chance to be the only band to got to make a DVD of our performance. Still available. I think you could probably get it on Amazon or at our merch store. Too. So we had the only full set recording, the only available crowd shots and things like that you know that's uh, so it's very cool uh, what time did the what time of the day did you end up playing what time was your set you know it's like i got asked that question yesterday and it's i i think it was around five o'clock okay pretty sure because the scorpions played after us and then van halen so van halen it was just kind of getting to be dusk in Southern California in May, late May. So that's eight o'clock, call it, you know, so we played an hour. So if we finished at six, uh, there's probably a 15 minute break. The Scorps played an hour. Then Van Halen, you know, did whatever they did because you never want to be the last band to play on a show like that ever. Yeah. Because <laughs> A, fry, but B, you had headliners all before you. You know, all great bands. And so when they were setting up the Us Festival, did they plan on it being as big as it was, or was it just who knew at the at the time? Um, I, that's, you'd have to ask them. I, you know, I don't know. I know they would, what they wanted to do. The idea was get the top to the five top touring bands of that year, of 1983, uh -huh. which was Van Halen, Scorpions, Triumph, 
uh, Priest and Ozzy. Those were the five top headline bands. Crew and and Quiet Riot were still kind of almost local LA bands at that point. So yeah. uh, you know they you got to take them off the table, but, but they were great. I mean they played fabulous, and they were well known in the area, so it was it was great to have them there. Uh, so. Uh, that's how they base the writing order. That's how they, you know, base the if we got paid what, all that, all that kind of stuff, right? And we debated whether we we're going to play there or not. You know, it was a tough call for us because we had um, our last uh, Southern California play was uh, we co-headlined the Rose Bowl with Dirty. Uh, oh wow! And 110,000 people sold the place all the way around. It was huge. Uh, so we were due for an indoor play in LA. And so the promoter there wanted to do three shows at Long Beach Arena. And, and we had, the, it was the same weekend, so it's the S Festival or, the, or, or the, for, uh, for us to play, we had to make a decision back in, I guess, show was in May, had to make the decision in January or February time, you know, so, but everybody needed an answer from us and we didn't know what to do. So <laughs> we're all going, oh, what do we do? We had the promoter from LA on the phone. We had the S Festival people. So they said, hey, nine o'clock uh, West Coast time. We need an answer. So five minutes to nine, we said, we cannot not play the S Festival. This is well, and just historical value. I mean, it ended up being one of the biggest shows of all time, you know? Yeah, it was, it was the heavy rock, hard rock, uh, whatever you want to call it, metal day, you know, metal concert, uh, celebration. Whatever it was in history, you know, it was yeah. it was the best of the best of the best for it at that snapshot in time. So that year, your touring year for Triumph, that was a big year for Triumph. Not even just us festival, just touring the world. I'm sure. Yeah, it was. It was a big year. Like we like I said, we came from an outdoor show in uh, the Suzy Top in Orlando the day before. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> how many? Yeah. Or I guess how many years has Triumph been around? I guess. Well, I guess. Um, 2025 will be year 50. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah. First started in 1975. Wow. No kidding. Yeah. So, uh, and so uh, what was it like starting? Did you guys just start out in Canada and just kind of cut your teeth there? And Yeah. So, you know, it's a kind of, you know, it's, it's probably just about any bad story. We had some advantages along the way. Um, but uh, in general, you have to slug it out. And, and, you know, but we slugged it out in such a way that we, for lack of a better word, we had a plan. We had almost a business plan of how we could develop the band and where to play and where not to play. Not That's just right. a gig at all, because we think it's a gig, which we did initially. We played everywhere and anywhere. It didn't matter. So yeah. we, you know, we played for food sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, what a career and just, uh, so when was the turning point for Triumph? When was the time where you guys just went, oh my gosh, we're going to the next level of this band from, well, there's from somebody starting and just trying to eat to, we're making money and touring and becoming a big band? Well, you know, you set a goal for yourself, right? But as soon as you get close to the goal line, you better set a new goal. Because yeah. if you cross the line, well, that's, we did what we wanted, you know, might as well go home and go to sleep for the rest of your life, we go. Okay, what do we want to do? You know, we want to go on record. So, you know, we cut to 48,000 units in Canada, 50,000 gold in Canada. And we said, uh oh, got to go for platinum now, which is 100,000. There you go. Which we want to, you know, but you got to, well, how do you get there? It just doesn't happen. Right. So, those are the kinds of things we did. You know, we had to break into the United States and the advantage of being big in San Antonio, Texas, on our first record. Uh, which never, didn't have U.S. distribution, but the record company, Canadian record company, sold ten inch of product there. Because one radio station played us and uh, showed us the power of radio. So, with that connection, was that how you connected with ZZ Top? And... Uh, well, no, uh, that, that that had nothing to do with it, really. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, ZZ was uh, that was 1976, so ZZ show was '83, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was, okay, got you, got you. It makes sense yeah. in the timeline. It was as easy. It was an outdoor show. It was, it was Sammy Hager, Ross Easy, uh, Rashika Collins, uh, a couple other bands. I can't remember. No, okay, gotcha. So radio, radio is definitely the thing that broke your band and really 
Radio Day with Touring, you know, being out there. Um, you gotcha. Uh, you know, we took advantage of television advertising. Nobody else was doing it. We're the only band that was doing it. And the commercials were incredibly fantastic. We, I mean, they weren't funny, I should say. They were like bombastic. You know, lots yeah. of fun, lots of big, the big, big points. It's coming to your sound, blah, blah, you know. And they were cool. So, but we used to buy time uh, on on what I call the news alternative stations, like between six and seven, where the networks had the news. There was always a, a like a Fox station like the RS, you know, in, in, in the market uh, that had Star Trek and Leave It to Beaver. Uh, so we used to buy time on Star Trek and Leave It to Beaver. 25 bucks a spot for a 60 second spot. And we just own, own those markets and have those oh, shows. Wow. Clyde, there was heavy rotation on TV spots. So that really helped because people could see what the band was. And they go, wow, we got to go see that in person. So huh. you could find that with radio. It was a good formula. So you guys were very unique and different just from other the bands, just in the way you're doing it. It's not like you were doing anything special. You're just doing your due diligence and it just seemed to work out. And that's usually yeah. how it goes. Yeah, you know, you take a shot and see what happens. And sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're not. You know, the ones that are lucky get to continue. The ones that don't got to pack their bags and go home. Well, and really the other thing too that also plays into that is when you think Triumph, you, there's the longevity of the songs. I mean, you know Triumph when you hear it on the radio and you still hear Triumph on the radio quite often. So it's so it speaks to just that mind frame and working that hard is, I mean, still to... 2023 and it's, you can still turn on the radio and hear Triumph and go, oh, hey, that's Triumph. It comes down to the music. I mean, you, you still got to have the music. You got to have the songs. Um, you got to have, uh, uh, you know, it's like you could have a great show and people will come to see you, but uh, not for long if you don't have those songs and everybody can say they keep hearing over and over and over again. Yeah. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, you become part of the, uh, uh, everybody was into music. You know, in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s, and music was, you know, you become part of the soundtrack of people's lives, people's lives. And that's, that's what the, the, that I think I'm most proud of what the band did, is we, we were important in people's lives. Well, I'm sure now when you play, I'm sure there's multi-generations when you look out and, you know, see the crowd and, you know, fans no, we, 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 we don't play anymore, so. <laughs> no, you're not going to, you guys need a resurgence. You need to bring it back. Uh, we haven't played it. We, you know, we played for the documentary, you know, for uh, super fans that came in from around the world, 150 or 200, I can't remember how many. And we played three songs. And then, uh, but before that, it was years, we played a big festival in Sweden. But before that, there we hadn't played in years before that. So it's not like we've been on the road supporting our records because we haven't made a record in a long time either. <laughs> Well, and a lot of it too is just the resurgence of hard rock and metal too. I think it's, it never went away. That's everybody says, oh yeah, well, I mean, when the S Festival played, right, hard rock and metal and whatever you wanted to call it, and, oh, it's yeah, it's just a cult following, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, they don't sold every other form of music, but no, it's a cult. So it's yeah. Like, well, it's funny too because when when I was a, when I was a kid, you know, my parents always said, "Ah, oh, it's a fade; he'll grow out of it." And as yeah. you can see, <laughs> fifty well, years old, like, I still haven't grown out of it. When I was growing up, my father kept saying the Beatles would never last. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So, uh, so what are you doing now? Do you still play music and still writing? And uh, don't play much. Like Every now and then, you know, um, you know, I go in the studio. Like I had to do some work on the S Festival project and. Uh, that there's uh, there's always something to do, <laughs> you know. Gotcha, it, it's gotcha. tri triumph oriented, and uh, you know. So we try to keep keep doing things that keeps the keep the fans you know interested because they like when, when we put stuff out, you know, like the film, for example. You know, that was a big deal for them. It's a really really a great film, and it's done really well. So, um, you know, that was a uh, you know, it took a lot of time, you know, that because. It's, COVID kind of screwed the whole thing up. Yeah. So just uh, ended up taking twice as long, three times as long. To turn up. Yeah, just yeah. much like it, with anything, it just, it's been that uh, timeline process. Yeah, it's, it seems to me like we're coming out of it now, thank goodness. But, um, you know, 
still beware, fire beware kind of, you know, as they say, it's you never know. So just don't be stupid. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, so uh, so we got the US Festival coming out. You, uh, you were mentioning the merch, the shirt. I definitely got to get one of those shirts. That, that's a cool shirt. And so where do you get all this stuff at? Where's the website and where should I everybody be going? I, you know, I think it's called, well, you could, there's a link on our, our website, which is uh, triumphmusic.com. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the other thing that's going on too, is they're, um, we're, um, uh, they're transporting, I guess, you know, having a, a, a homecoming, the US Festival concert will be debuting on the Triumph YouTube channel on the night of the 25th of May. Uh, and Rick, Mike, and Gil will be there to chat while it's playing, uh, you know, with the fans. So we'll be able to do, a, you know, an online chat kind of thing while, while the film's playing. Oh, wow. That's super cool. That's exciting. Well, hey, uh, so what else you got, Mike? What else do you want to plug? Anything? The biggest plug I got is we got great fans. Awesome. Yep, I would agree. That's good stuff. Well, Mike, I will let you get going and thank you so much for your time today. And we will make sure we plug the website, make sure you get your Triumph uh, gear and check out Triumph US Festival uh, when it comes out. All right, cool. Awesome. Appreciate your time, Mike. Thank you All so right, much. All right, Vigo. Thanks, Chris. All right.